kayak yang dibilang banyak orang fusion is confusion tapi ada satu masakan yang berhasil mengubah pikiran gua lu bayangin aja nih di satu masakan ada unsur Japanese, Chinese, Italian, Spanish ini tuh kombinasi rasa yang gak masuk akal sebenarnya sampai lu cobain sendiri in Henshin you will get the experience No, the experience of the Peruvian food. I will be your guide. I will introduce my food in a set menu or in the branch menu, and I will explain you why the reason, why the the storytelling about how this inspiration, where it's coming from, the product, the reason, and then you will enjoy a little of the rainforest, the jungle, the Andes, and la costa. So you will get a little of all of these in a set menu. Tahun 2011, Ferran Adria, salah satu chef terbaik dunia, bilang kalau Peru megang kunci masa depan gastronomi dunia. Di tahun 2013, Alain Ducasse juga bilang Peru akan jadi aktor utama skena kuliner global. Iya, kalau dua chef sekelas mereka bilang gitu, ya wajar dong kalau semua orang mulai kepo soal masakan Peru. Bisa diceritain nggak gimana Peru bisa dapat banyak influence masakan dari seluruh dunia? First, we need to start to know that Peru is a Spanish colony. So in the beginning, we were the Inca Empire. The Inca Empire, the most important city was Cusco, Machu Picchu, and usually the food is from the altitude. We were uh, eating potatoes, quinoa, you know, the grains, corn. But the king, if the king Inca at that moment want to eat fish, they used to bring from the coast. Because Peru, it's important to mention, we have three different natural regions. So Lima is located in the coast. Then we Cusco, the most important city, because for Machu Picchu, is in the mountains, no? in the Cordillera de los Andes. And then we have the rainforest, the jungle of Peru. So in these three different natural regions, we have different products and different cultures. But if we start talking about the region of the gastronomy of Peru, is when the Spanish people arrive to Peru, to Cusco, and then they found too much gold. So they were very interested of that. So they conquer our country and they installed the new capital in Lima because they need a port. So in that moment, they brought African, Italian, Spanish people with them, no? For this um, conquer. This is how we start this mix with the native Peruvian and the Spanish people. So then after this land start to grow because the, they distribute with the different conquerors uh, land to make crops, they brought people from China and then also the people from Japan running away from the war arrived to Lima and this is how all this mix start. So everything starts in Lima and we used to eat raw fish always. We have ceviche because you, you can read in the chronics that we eat ceviche but marinate not in lime because the lime was brought it for the Spanish people. We used to have some fruit similar like the passion fruit, it's called tumbo. So it's always sour, sour fruit, chilies, because in Peru is everything about chilies. We have rocoto chili, amarillo chili, limo, charapita, mirasol, and many different. We start to cook a seafood when the no, cook prepare seafood with the Japanese. So the Japanese brought to us all that influence, and he improved our way how to eat the ceviche, and then we have this uh, new plate between sashimi and ceviche that is called tiradito. This is totally Nikkei. Oke, okay, gue mau jelasin dikit. Nikkei itu adalah istilah buat orang Jepang dan keturunannya yang tinggal di luar Jepang. From the Chinese people, we have the technique of the wok and also how to cook and eat vegetables. The crunchiness of the vegetables, the colors. Two very strong influence that we have Chinese Uh, Japanese, but of course the Spanish, a little of Italian too. So all this mix <laughs> that we have in Lima of cultures and all the diversity that we have in products because we have in the coast, the mountains and the rainforest make our gastronomy so special. Now you can understand a little more 
why we are now like uh, develop all this uh, new trend food, but it's not new for us. We always eat this kind of food, always, no? Always eat the seafood, but we start to improve the Nikkei food because the influence of the Japanese people. Jadi boleh dibilang masakan Peru itu um, traditionally fusion? A mix of everything. <laughs> yes. The only fusion that works. <laughs> the only fusion that works because we are talking about a long time ago, no? This is already Peruvian food. So you will find a chifa, no? With a mix with the, the Chinese. And now you can see everywhere Nikkei food. But Nikkei food, when I was young, my father had his own restaurant. His um, teacher of DK food was Toshiro Konishi. He was a really close friend from Nobu Matsuhisa. Nobu was in Peru, or also in 1987, around that, to work in one restaurant, it's called Matsue. So they came together to Peru. Uh, Toshiro was very close friend from my grandmother. My grandmother at that moment has a um, a traditional restaurant from the north of Peru, from Chiclayo. This is a city, and this city is famous because they have a very, very tasty food. Muy bien. Gracias. <laughs> so he wants to learn about Peruvian food, and he was teaching to my grandmother and my father Japanese techniques. So this is like a, a small example how we got this influence of Japanese. We always eat all this ceviche and seafood, octopus and everything. But now it's more a mix. Terus apa yang nyebabin masakan Peru mendadak booming di dunia gastronomi? Uh, the thing is Gaston Acurio, this is our famous chef from Peru, he start to develop the new product that we have. Gaston Acurio, anggap aja dia Jamie Oliver-nya Amerika Latin. We have, uh, not now for COVID, but I hope we restart this festival that is called Mistura. Mistura is like um, a scenario that you can see from all the different regions of Peru, our products. So with that product, the chef start to do new plates and also the traditional plates. And also we do some new mix, by example, with the um, Nikkei food that is now like a trend. and. The, the, the world start to see Peru for, for that reason, no? Because we start to showcase our, our food. Before, no. Before, we used to eat the same food, but nobody knows. But for Gaston, we start to be like uh, recognized for the, around the world. Jadi ini semua berkat satu orang doang? Yes. Gimana cara Anda menjelaskan taste masakan Peru ke orang awam? Um, colorful, mixture, You have a lot of acidity. Tasty, spicy, yeah, like the people, <laughs> yeah, spicy and sour. <laughs> no, no, but... Very refreshing. Very refreshing, but depends on the region, because if we talk about Lima, yes, it's more seafood. If you talk about uh, the north, you will find coriander, you will find loche, lobsters, prawn, yellowfin tuna in El Nuro, different. In the south, totally different. In Tacna, it's more Italian influence. You will find delicious artichokes. You will find um, another seafood also, different, different seafood. The ceviche will be different in the south, will be different in the north, will be different in Lima, totally different. Then if you go to Cusco, you will find Uh, guinea pig, you will find uh, alpaca. Um, throat, grains, no quinoa, also pork. And the pork is something that Spanish people brought. Even if you go to the rainforest, to the jungle, you will find also pork because they make cecina, it's like a sun-dried meat a little salty and they do it with some plantains, deep fried plantains and then mash it that is called tacacho. So it's totally different. You can see each region will cook with the product that they have. What we are doing now, the chef, is if we have like a speciality, no, a specialty of Nikkei food, but I am Peruvian, like I will use the techniques and all this influence, but using Peruvian products. This is something that I want to start to do it here. My style is different, 
because for my background. So I cook uh, like my family style. I don't cook so much like Japanese. I use the traditional recipes in maybe trendy plating, but the flavors is, are more important for me. Like the flavor of what remind my childhood and my family, my grandmother's recipe, I'm sure everybody will love. This is the most important for me. So I take care about that. Sebelum ke sini, gue emang udah agak underestimate gitu. Gue pikir gue tahu sebice, gue udah coba di beberapa tempat. Jadi begitu ke Henshin, gue mau coba masakan Peru yang lain. Tapi sebicenya Diana ini beda. Yeah, that was for the. This is the special ceviche, no? The the ceviche carretillero. This is a street food. If you go to Peru, you can go to many very very good restaurant. But in the end, if you go to some place like traditional and a small restaurant, they can cook in front of you. They can cut the fish in front of you. They will fry something that is not calamari, but it's a cheap cheap uh, version of calamari, like we call pota, and they will prepare, uh, squeeze the lime in the in the moment and mix everything and then put this crunchy deep fried calamari and we have the toasted corn that we call cancha and you eat this with a spoon because all the tiger's meat, you know, this juice in the bottom with the lime and the chili and then the fish and the crunchy, then you have the sweet potato that is sweet. So you have all the flavors. Now you have spicy, sour, savory, sweet. The onions also are crunchy. So all these flavors. So you have everything in your mouth. So for that reason, is the ceviche is so special. Then this is a classic ceviche carretillero. Jadi tiger's milknya itu di tone down, enggak terlalu asam. Gue yakin semua orang Indonesia bisa makan sih. Then we can make like many many more. We can make it with avocado. We can make it with a little of soya, we can make it with different tiger's milk, with rocoto, amarillo, tiger's milk, we can make it with any fruit too. If we can make it with passion fruit, we can do. So this is yeah something more a trend, but what you eat is something more traditional. So sometimes we don't need to go like to extremes to get something good, right? Sometimes something simple is better. Classic ceviche, Peruvian ceviche. Untuk ceviche, biasa pakai ikan apa sih? Well, here I am using baramundi in Peru. My favorite is corvina, but you can make ceviche with any kind of fish, even if it's not white fish. You can do it with anything and will be delicious, tasty. But it's important that it's fresh. That is the only important. Indonesia sebenarnya juga punya loh menu yang rada-rada mirip sama ceviche, namanya gohu dari Ternate. Bisa pakai tuna, kadang pakai cakalang. Ini chef Indo nggak ada mau ngulik nih. Ceviche, they prepare it in front of you, and then they fry the calamari and they put it in the top. So this is like very delicious. Jadi hari ini ada menu apa aja nih? Okay, so today we serve makis, no, a variety of makis. Our Uh, rolls are different because you can note it. We put some toppings and different sauce. So the octopus is an um, inspiration of pulpo al olivo. Pulpo al olivo, pulpo is octopus in Spanish. Olivo is olives. So we make a kind of homemade mayo with the black olives. And then we're, we make a roll. So we have the topping of the octopus and the sauce. This is, you don't need to add soya, so you can eat it like direct. The other with the crab, also with the spicy mayo, then acevichado with the acevichada sauce, that is also a homemade sauce that we recreate or try to get the flavors of the ceviche with the tuna. So all these uh, makis you can feel inside, you have textures. You have something crunchy, you have something creamy, you have any some sauce, some spiciness. So this is what is the difference between with the plain Japanese uh, nigiris or, or rolls, right? So this is a little more colorful. Uh, the, the flavor is more like funny because you have a little of everything. Yeah. You can share or you can taste a little of all the different uh, variety that we have here. We have also sashimi. 
We have also ceviche, so this is like a cold starter. Then we have the quinoa salad, I don't know if you taste it. Cobain dong. Ini tiba-tiba makanan yang gue bisa makan setiap hari karena gue tahu ini sehat, ringan, very refreshing. This quinoa salad is a superfood salad because you have the quinoa, it has a lot of benefits. Then you have the pumpkin seed, roasted pumpkin, the pomegranate. Pomegranate is super healthy. Spinach and then a dressing of passion fruit. So it's totally fruity, freshy, tasty and also healthy. Sometimes you eat, but then you will feel like heavy or so. Or mm, guilty? Or guilty, exactly. <laughs> exactly, guilty. In this time, you can eat and you can see something <laughs> healthy and then you don't regret so then the body feel okay and sometimes if you are, are going to feel bad after it's not worth it to eat <laughs> so then after we have these cold starters then we have uh, some snacks like the taquitos and the baos the steamed baos another chinese influence another chinese influence totally and then we have our main course that we try to do something with meat something with duck Uh, then we have the seafood, the rice. By the way, gue tertarik sama duck-nya itu dia apain sih? The duck? No, it's the, the, the bone it is the part of the, the between the leg and the leg, but this is the bone it. And then we make our marination and then we cook it like sous vide first. Okay. And then we finish in the oven to roast it a little more because it has a good quantity of fat. So, arroz con pato, this is uh, totally from the north of Peru, from Chiclayo. This is uh, my grandmother's recipe. This is the coriander rice with a little of cumin and all this flavor with the yellow chili. Yellow chili is always in almost all the preparations that we have. Um, duck and the onions, it's like simple. You see, the tradition is simple. Sometimes the chef, we want to do it like visually uh, more nice, but sometimes no need, no? When something is good, you don't need to change. Traditional is traditional. So this is totally traditional. Jadi Anda punya tantangan buat memperkenalkan masakan Peru ke Indonesia. Strateginya gimana? How? <laughs> We already start. Henshin has five years. The people accept very, very good this concept of Nikkei food. But now with this branch, because it's different, the, the feeling that you have when you see the sun, And then uh, in Lima, we are very crazy about the, the beach, no? Beach style. So if I have this inspiration to how we eat in Lima in summertime, no? If we see the, the sun is shining, we are only think about ceviche. Yes, it's immediately. We wake up, we see sun, we want ceviche. <laughs> so this is something that uh, with this branch, we want to develop and We need to teach our guests how they will enjoy this kind of food. Permanently, we can change the menu every time. If somebody likes something, we can see, okay, this is uh, my direction and this is how I am doing. The feedback is very important. Thank you, Diana. Thank you. Setelah Peru, konon dunia mulai lirik Indonesia sebagai inspirasi gastronomi. Jadi gue akan tutup video ini dengan satu pertanyaan. Kapan Chef Indo siap? Karena di 2019, Indonesia diundang ke San Sebastian Gastronomica di Spanyol, salah satu kongres gastronomi paling bergengsi di dunia. Ironisnya nih, dua dari tiga pembicara yang mewakilin Indonesia, bukan orang Indonesia. Lain kali lah kita omongin ini. Di situ ada cowok, mukanya... Lumayan ganteng lah. Walaupun kayaknya rada galak sih. <laughs> Jadi berdasarkan analitik, viewernya Gastronusa itu kebanyakan cowok. Siapa tahu kalau ada dia, viewer cewek gue tambah banyak. Uh, susah. 